Hi, this is Jessica Damasa, and I'm the Guide Will Insights Lounge here at Exponential Medicine 2017. Joining me right now, we have Dr. Jordan Schlein, and he is the founder of Private Medical, and also the founder and chairman of Health Loop, and the founder and chairman of the Eat Real Certification. So, um, Jordan, I understand that you were just part of the session on the future of clinical medicine, and so I'm curious to hear how all of these things fit into the future of, of clinical medicine. What I'd like to start with is Health Loop, I think, because I, I've heard a little bit about it, and it sounds like it really is. Um, from a patient engagement perspective, something that is much needed, but something that is quite innovative in clinical care. Yeah, so Health Loop was really born out of a, 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 a I call it innovation by irritation, um, <laughs> which is I uh, took care of a, a woman in my office many years ago, and she had cough, fever, and shortness of breath, okay. and I listened to her lungs, and she clearly had a pneumonia, and I said, here's antibiotics, and here's my cell phone number, um, call me if you're not better because there's a 97% chance you're gonna be fine, but on the 3% chance that you're not, like that could be really bad news. Right. So seven days later, the phone rang, and it was the emergency room saying she's now here in respiratory distress, and she's being admitted to the uh, ICU and being put on a ventilator, and she may not make it, and I... You're like, she should have called me. <laughs> I said, why, my first thought was, why didn't she call me? And then my second thought immediately thereafter was, shame on me, why didn't I call her? But we're not really trained to call people with a really 97% good odds chance to get better. And then I had a major insight, which, which kind of influenced this whole health loop thing, which was there's something called cognitive empathy. And cognitive empathy is when not I feel your pain and I, is like I try to be you. Okay. I actually try to get out of me and I try to be you as you're experiencing something. Okay. And so I tried to be her and I thought she went home the day after I saw her and was in bed, mm -hmm. shivering and sick. And she asked herself a question. Am I better today? Yeah. Or am I worse today? Or am I the same today? And if she's better, she's not going to call me. And if she's the same, she's probably, probably not, not going to call, call me. You. But if she's worse, she may wait another day because yeah. it's just one well, day later. I don't want to bother the doctor. I don't want to bother the doctor. What I ever thought. So the next day she wakes up. Let's say she's the same. Let's just say she's the same. Okay. And the next day she wakes up and she asks herself the same question. Same, better, worse. And again, if she's worse, she's, she may call me. If she's the same or better, she's not going to call me. So my insight was is that every day, she probably felt I'm the same, I'm not worse. She didn't call me because she wasn't worse. Right. But the insight was is that if you're worse, if you're the same, you're actually worse. Yes, because you're the same. Because you're not better. And you're not better. But you have <laughs> to be better. For a longer better. period of time. So, so basically <laughs> what I did is I opened up a spreadsheet and I, uh, and I decided I was gonna call every one of my patients every day and ask them, are you the same, better, or worse? <laughs> and I was gonna come up with three empathy codes. And those empathy codes, um, are going to be, I'm concerned about you, I'm kind of concerned about you, and I'm not that concerned about you. Okay. And if I'm really concerned about you, I'll call you every day. And if I'm kind of concerned about you, I may call you every other day. And if I'm not that concerned, I may call you every third day. But the insight was is that I'm going to score better plus one, I'm going to score worse minus one, and I'm going to score same negative a half. Okay. Because same is worse. It is worse. But when you're sick, you're not thinking clearly, and if you're the same, you don't want to bother the doctor. Right. So two out of the three of her options are not going to call me. But I want her to, so I started calling people, had a spreadsheet, it kind of got messy because they went into the phone and leave voicemails. <laughs> I tried to do email, <clears throat> but this was, you know, uh, not everybody had email at the time, this was, you know, a long time ago. And so then someone said, you need to turn that into software. So you did. So I, acc I say I accidentally started a software company because I really didn't intend, to, I just did it as an experiment. Sure. And then I built it. So now, fast forward. So what is the software? So yeah. fast forward. So imagine. You go to see a doctor and you, uh, you get a, a new diagnosis okay. or you're going to have surgery. So it's act one, scene one of your healthcare movie. <laughs> you're the main actor. I bet you want your movie to end well. Yeah, right? probably. So in, in a movie that ends well, there's, there's, you know who the director and the producer and, and the supporting cast are. You know what the lines are. You yeah. know the scenes. I'd like a Wes you know Anderson healthcare movie. You, that would be great. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what your healthcare movie is going to look like. I mean, it, you should. So Health Loop is the script. So I tell people uh, that I come from the future. And, 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 and so, or at least I try to remember the future. And in medicine, <laughs> you can remember the future because things are very predictable. So if you just had hip surgery, people three days after hip surgery, for example, or three days after new thyroid diagnosis, three days later after you've processed, oh my God, I didn't have this, now I have this, you're starting to ask yourself questions. Right. And you know what you're gonna do when you, you're gonna ask Dr. Google, and Dr. Google can tell you it's cancer. So you shouldn't of ask course, Dr. No, Google. So Dr. Google's an oncologist. We shouldn't talk to Dr. No, Google. No, don't do that. It's good, but it'd be better to talk to your doctor. And so you need to have a trusted relationship and you need a, an easy communication channel. So 
So basically, what we did is we architected all these diseases and conditions and diagnosis, and we wrote the scripts for these healthcare movies, but you're the main actor and I'm the producer and director, and I will put the supporting cast. And so what it does is you now get an app, email, text, whatever you want. You can decide how sure. you get the information. Okay. But I say to you, you've just been diagnosed with, pick the condition, would you like to get the best outcome the fastest? Yes. And you say yes. And I want you to get the best outcome fast. So the way we're going to do that is you're going to engage with me mm -hmm. on this platform or whatever, email, text, but again, we don't care. So you, you get the text and it says, hey, Dr. Schlein wants to check in with you today. You're like, oh, that's cool. Hit the button. And it says, hey, you're three days after this diagnosis. So I know what time it is. Yeah, I, right? I, I, it's I, timed. I, it's, I, I know what time it is. I know what you want. Hey, you're probably thinking about these things. Here's how you need to think about them. And here's some resources of what to what to go wash or read. Okay. It. But more importantly, tell me how you're doing. Yes. So I, because I know your condition, if you again, I'll just use hip surgery because we just did a big study with Anthem. Okay. Um, on on hip surgery, is I I know that I should be asking about blood clots and uh, and infections and you know breathing for the first week uh, because that's where all the complications happen. Happen. Okay. So I'll ask you, you know, were you able to walk today? What is your pain level? So it's this it's this kind of dialogue, this interactive thing. So it's proactive. It's asynchronous. Meaning you can get it, you can get it whenever you want, yeah. and it's exception based. So you feel like it's me doing it to you with you, right? But I just press play on the movie. But if you answer a question wrong or you don't answer a question, uh -huh. then I get a text. Okay, so and immediately she, I'm shot back into real life and out of my movie. That's right. You <laughs> okay. will you will go to the movie and as soon as you trip a wire, mm -hmm. so we have 18 different survey instruments. It's like Survey Monkey on steroids, kind of. <laughs> All right. But but again, but it's part of a narrative, so it's over time. Uh huh. Um, so so. You know, now we have over uh, millions of, of patient interactions. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Millions of different patients in our interactions. You just did this massive so, study so with hip we, surgery. So we did it. The anthem. Yeah. So we've proven that 80 by using this tool, 87% mm -hmm. of people will say because we asked them two weeks or a month later, um, did this avoid a doctor visit or did this avoid a, uh, a phone call to the doctor's office? 87%. Said yes. Said yes. And so if you think about all the people going to doctor's offices And right yet now, they were probably in better communication with their doctor. That's right. And they didn't have to leave their bed. Then and they, they got the, been. Yeah. the only reason you call a doctor or go to a doctor's office is because you have this existential question and you want the answer. So <clears throat> why don't you get it from your doctor? Or why don't, so we've proven that we can do that. We've also proven that with the study with Anthem, we did a two-year study, multi-state, multi-practice, multi-age groups. And we showed uh, over 18 months. And the question was, is we're going to put some of the people on health loop and some of the people not on health loop. And then we're gonna see what the cost of those patients are okay. over two years. And what we found is that health loop um, reduced the cost per patient by $560 per patient. Wow. I it mean, when that adds up, it adds up. This was like, <laughs> no, but we did this with hundreds of patients. So just on the patients that we did, they were much less expensive mm -hmm. than the ones that were not health loop. And it's because we were able to catch complications early. Yep. You know, one of the interesting things is, when we first did it, we would ask, do you have pain in your calf, in your, in, the, in your leg? Because that's usually the first sign of a blood clot. Sure. And, and we missed a lot of them. And then what we realized is that the pain you feel when you have a blood clot feels like a cramp. It's mm -hmm. not painful. It's kind of crampy. So as soon as we changed the question to, do you have a cramp in your calf? We started catching all these blood clots really early. Interesting. And then you get take the medicine and you never went to the hospital with a, with a, with a pulmonary embolism or anything. So, yeah. so basically, it's basically these narrative arcs over time that's very personalized to sure. you and your doctors on the other end. No, and by the way, if you don't check in, if I send you the thing and you don't check in, you know what? I treat engagement like a vital sign. And if you don't check in, then we go analog on you and we pick <laughs> up the phone and we call you and we say, are you okay? You haven't checked in. So that's a whole, like people want to feel like someone cares about them. Like we all just want yeah. to be loved at the end and we want, we want to be, someone's got our back. Someone's, a, someone's our, we have an advocate. So what this is like a digital, I call it digital empathy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, just, it's, it's really, your doctor's on the other end, but we've- And I want to ask about the doctor, speaking of. <laughs> sure. So the doctors that you worked with when you rolled this out to their patients, how, how, what was their response? It was just so, like, oh my God, I have to do so much more? Or was it more of like a finally, the patient well, engagement mechanism that I've been well, looking for because I've been dying to keep in touch with my patients better? Okay, so I advise, I, I'm a doctor in Silicon Valley. I advise a lot of companies in Silicon Valley and anybody that's building something in digital health, whatever it is, my question is, is Who's paying for it and how much do they pay? Right. And then I say, and the only people that are going to pay for it are insurance companies, they're not paying for it. Doctors, they don't have the money, they're not paying for it. Um, hospitals, nah, they're not paying for it. And patients, no, nope, they're not paying for it either. So tell me what you're building again and who's <laughs> going to buy, who's going to buy, and how much are they going to pay? Right. And the truth is, we went to a couple doctors that were 
kind of forward thinking. They wanted to show that they were using cool tools, okay. but they had to pay for it. So doctors originally paid us money for it. Ah, uh, okay. And, and, and so, anyway, it, we built it up. And, and so the usage was was good because I they, mean they were all in as far as having. Well, to once have they paid realized that this this actually saved them time. Yeah. And, uh, and if you save them time, you act, that's actually making money because then they have more right. time to see more patients, sure. maybe, or they don't get stuck with all these patients filling up their office with repeat visits that could have been a digital visit. So, but we've we've since scaled it up, and now we're in hospitals all around the country. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's super cool. But the truth is, I want doctors to get paid for it because. There are codes that we use. If I do an EKG on you, I get paid for the EKG. If I if I like I don't know, do a procedure on you, I get paid. So I just went to the AMA and the FDA, and I said, why why aren't doctors getting paid to do this? Right. And 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 the criteria to get paid for something in medicine there are three criteria: does it take time, does it collect information, and does it help you make a decision? Well, it sounds like you hit all three. So I, I feel like in order to get adoption of these tools. You have to, doctors have to get paid for their time. We, we have to stop this with doctors should pay for things. Like doctors are getting crunched everywhere. And if they, if they use a tool that helps, and all of our data shows, like it's amazing. Every patients love it, doctors love it. We save time, we save money. Jordan, that's fantastic. Why aren't they paying for it? So uh, <laughs> well, that's thank the, you. yes, you're welcome. No, no problem, that's fantastic. And I think, I mean, if anybody's interested in more information, the company is called Health Loop. That's what the solution is called. And so you can look for it. Um, and it works. And it works. So thank you so much for joining us we, here in the lounge. You're welcome. I'm sorry, were you gonna? Oh no, uh, we catch 60 complications early every day. That's, That's fantastic. Like, I mean, it, it really, it really. So you've got to check this out. It's basically helps. what this boils down to. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Jordan. It's fascinating welcome. to hear about it. I'm Jessica Damasa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge at Exponential Medicine 2017. Thanks.